Before we get started tonight, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of Fast Break King on Ice Sports Radio. I want to introduce one of our sponsors, Southern California Warriors Semi Pro Football Team. The Warriors Semi Pro Sports is unlike any other sports organization. Players pay to play and host so many different outcomes, whether it's playing to get filmed to try for professional teams, big time colleges, or just playing to try and play in shape. No matter what, all semi pro players have one thing in common, and that's Playing for the love of the game. The SoCal Warriors have been on a quest to earn titles and get players second chances to, since 2017. Whether you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, get semi pro sports a chance if you love your sport. You may get that second chance when you've been waiting for it as an athlete. You can find them on social media at Twitter at SoCal Warriors, Instagram at Southern California Warriors, dash Warriors, and on Facebook, Southern California Warriors. Also, if you're following them on through the social media sites, hey, they got tryouts coming out soon. So keep posted, send your film out, and get ready to try out and make the team. Now on to the show. Well, the two legacy teams in the NBA, the Lakers and the Celtics, are gone from the playoffs. Plus, young Luka put up a fight against the Mavericks, but it wasn't enough to overcome the Clippers. What can the Mavs do to kind of make things better for the young superstar? Plus, we called this last year, the Phoenix Suns, one of the hot teams come out the bubble from last year. Now I'm riding that momentum in, from the regular season into the postseason. Can they keep this up? We'll discuss that and much more here on Fast Break, live on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for that is all sports. And you're welcome to join us. And join us as you shout tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We got a lot of stuff to discuss. You know, since we were last on here, you know, it seemed like the bottom almost fell out in basketball news. Lakers going out. Celtics losing, but then wholesale changes in the front office and the sideline. Mike is sexy. You know, this upcoming basketball season is going to be his swan song. So... A lot of things to discuss, but D Lock, how you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing pretty good, man. Um, everything is going pretty well. Uh, a lot of news going on right now, man. We had a couple good games going on tonight, so it definitely played a difference in what we're going to see in the next round. Yeah, a lot of stuff to discuss. A lot of things happening. Uh, let's kind of, let's you know, jump in today's action right now. Game seven today, Clippers, Mavs. Clippers winning one twenty six to one eleven. Young Luca has forty six points, fourteen assists, seven rebounds for the Mavs. But it wasn't enough, D Lock. We we kind of talked about this in the past. That. They need they need us like so they need something else for this team to kind of get over the hump. What what should the Mavs do in the future uh, here in the, you know upcoming offseason to improve this team? You know what you got in Luca. What else do you see to to improve this team? Because if you see a stat line like that, that should be that should be enough to beat the team. But you know 
with the way Kawhi played the last three games, really carried the Clippers. What should the Mavs do to help improve this team? I mean, at this point, the the Mavs they need to necessarily have they need to have a big um, a big man, but the biggest thing is. Um, Luka can only be Luka. Understand what I'm saying? So now, at this point, you know, do you expect more from, do you expect more from Benny Smith? That's hard. Because at this point, I mean, you got Benny Smith, you got Porzingis, um, Paul George, Clippers just showed up, so it's going to be kind of difficult. Uh, you still there, D-Lock? Yeah. Um, for me, I'm just trying to figure out like who's the better guy that for them to um, actually put onto their their team because both they started Boban and Boban was Boban, but at the same time, you know, yeah. So at this point, if you have Boban, you know, being Boban, but Luca can only do so much. So now, do you really? What else could you do? I mean, unless you can pick up another guy, like Luca's gonna be everything at this point. You can probably get you a small forward. Um, you can get you a center, but Porzingis and Luca's gonna be Luca. I mean, I just feel like the choirs, quiet them are probably just quiet. And Paul George is probably the team that they are, and it's gonna be hard to stop them. So, at this point, you know, what else could you do? Um, you probably could add some more scores. I probably would do that. But at this point, um, probably draft another guy to go in rotation with them. Tim Hardaway really played pretty decent but could have played better. Uh, there's a couple of things that could have increased, but they did run into, you know, a team that, it's pretty solid, if you ask me. So, um, the Mavs did what they can. Now, they should have closed this, this game out two, uh, two nights ago, if you ask me. Yeah, I, we talked about in the past. Luka, he can't do everything. He can't be your best post player. You know, playmaker, I think, you know, that's a given that, you know, he, he, he is. But you know, the, the as great a game he has his, he has had the past couple games. Those other guys got to show up. I mean, you mentioned about Hardaway; he was like one for nine today from three point land. I mean, they ain't gonna cut it on a game seven win all type of game. And then you, you know, you look to the bench; you you barely got any scoring from the bench. Kleber didn't do nothing for you. He just played nine minutes. Brunson only played ten. So Rick Carlisle was kind of he- heavenly depending on his starters tonight. I mean, this afternoon. You know, Bobon, you know, 10, 14 and 10. But, you you know, you mentioned my la- uh, la- uh, last Friday's game. He missed some easy shots that should have went in. That could like greatly affect that game, you know, on on that game six. So, you know, for the Mavs, just kind of look at immediately after this loss. I think you got the wing players. You know, you got another rook, uh, rookie. You didn't really play this much this season, in um, in Green from uh, Arizona, Josh Green. So maybe he'd be affected more in their rotation uh, next year. But you're like you mentioned your backup, the big situation. 
you got to figure that out. He also got to figure out in the offseason if Porzingis is going to be that running mate for Luka. Because he really didn't show up that much in this series. Nope. I mean, it was games that we seen Luka do what he do, and Porzingis was nowhere to be found. So for me, it's like, do you really depend on Porzingis? I mean, now he did show up today, but imagine if he shows up in other games, right? We're talking about this game could could have been done in six or in five. But since you don't want to show up, now you make it a lot harder for your team because now you're going back to game seven in L.A. Like, the series before this, we were hearing, okay, yeah, the team that has won all the games so far, they've won away games, right? But we know what Kawhi and Paul George possess. Niggas P- Platoon showed up today. Let's be real. He showed up. Yeah. But one reason why he did is because they were in L.A. So a lot of these times, you know, you have to realize that you're putting yourself in a bad position by forcing the game seven. Close this series out when you can. And it's hard to do that when Porzingis doesn't show up some games or a couple guys. Um, now, I kind of understand why they did move Porzing- uh, Boban to the five, but they should have closed it out at home in Dallas. So now you have a scenario where things could be very tough. Yeah, it's going to be tough. You know, look at the Clippers side of things real quick. It's not to see look look Canard get some action. You pay all that man, that man all that money, and he shot three for five for y'all and gave y'all eleven points off the bench. Imagine that. But all jokes aside, though, but for the Clippers, Quan later took that series over by game five. And once he took that series over, you know, I think, you know, it, it was kind of like a wrap in a sense for the Mavericks. Not saying they could have won to finish out the series, but Leonard was getting his shots. He was making big buckets when needed to. You know, he shot 10 for 15 for today, 10 rebounds, 9 assists. You know, he almost fouled out, but, you know, when, you know, push came to shove and they need some buckets, he came through. Paul George, he played pretty solid. Almost had a triple double himself. So your two star players played great. You know, for your team. Marcus Moore, seven for nine for three point land. Great job for him. Or Markeith. My one one more sense. Y'all, y'all know who I'm talking about. Anyways. And then like Taren and Taren Rodriguez saying in the chat. Another guy that Ty Lue kind of is depending on his rotation and put like Patrick Beverly in the back burner for right now. Terrence Mann. That young guy is showing up and playing solid minutes for this team. So for the for the clips, you know, I, I, for Ty Lue, I hope they get this stuff together. I hope they can figure some things out. You know, um, I believe they, who they playing next? Uh, I believe it's uh, Utah, I believe, right? Am I right on that? Yeah, they got Utah. Um, that's going to be a pretty seat, a pretty solid matchup. Um, I was hearing from one of my guys, you know, he felt like the team to watch out for now that the Lakers, dang LeBron, but now that the late in eighty, now that the Lakers are not going to be a team to, you know, repeat or contest, he was saying that one of the teams to watch out for was Utah. Um, the reason why he was saying that is because they have a lot of shooters, so uh, they're going to be a tough matchup. Um, but for me, I've always had in question what Mike Conley would do. But now at this point, you want to see what they can do in the seven-game series with uh, 
Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. So it's going to be kind of tricky. Um, Gobert can be Gobert, but we know Gobert is, Gobert is a defensive player. He's more of a defense. He's not a big time scorer like that. So uh, it's going to be very, it's going to be very tricky and see how this happens. Uh, but yeah, that's what they got. They got Utah. Yeah, I think you know. For Utah, they took you know they took advantage of Memphis's inexperience and stuff like that. And then you know Dylan Brooks and, and foul trouble for Memphis also, especially Dylan Brooks who's like, you know like I was been watching the games like damn dude if you say I foul tr- trouble and play a little bit smarter, hell you you could be offering way more than you do do at times, but maybe that comes with more time maturity. But you know kind of looking ahead this Utah LA Clippers series. You know, Dalvin Mitchell is still coming back for injury. Now you're going to a more seasoned team, more defensive-minded team. You know? And, you know, for the Jazz, are they ready for that? You know, can they, you know, you know, Stop Kawhi Leonard, who's kind of on a hot streak right now. My only question for that series, you know, and I don't know what it is with Paul George and Joe Ingles, but it's like Joe Ingles, he kind of gets in Paul George's head and kind of messes him up. I was like, you know, you got to be stronger than this if you're Paul George. You got to. Well, we know we know what Paul George present, presents. Like he shows up sometimes and he doesn't show up. So how like how long do we see the Paul George that we've been seeing? Um, we do know another thing about Utah. Utah is a Utah is a defensive team. So now, if we know that Utah is a defensive team, they're gonna show they're gonna throw different things at at Paul George at Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi is gonna be quiet. We got to make sure that Paul George shows who he is instead of turning to a pandemic peak. Yeah. And I think, you know, if Paul George don't let Joe Eagles get into his head and all that stuff, yeah, I think, you know, Clippers could win is that series in six or seven. I think. You know, as long as you get solid performances from Batum, Marcus Morris, you know, get solid, decent minutes from Zubak. And now probably, you probably see some Pat Beverly in this series. Just throw another body at Donovan Mitchell. I think the Clippers could come out on top on that. I can see that. Um, I can see the Clippers uh, closing it. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be very tough. Uh, you know, Utah has been playing pretty good. I mean, we this kind of this kind of series reminds me back to what LeBron was saying as far as an All Star game, as far as nobody really picking, you know, Utah. You know, back in the NBA Jam days. So I hope Utah uses as a motivation uh, for them to play good this series. But this series is gonna be very interesting. Um, not sure who who's gonna be on Kawhi. Now, that, on another thing, too, I think we're going to see a lot of a Terrence Mann, Rondo. We're going to see a lot of them in the rotation, and they're going to play a bigger part in this series. They're going to be something to watch out for big time. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And Another thing, too, oh. another thing too is we got to figure out when we're going to see Serge Ibaka. Like, we haven't seen him Ooh. in the last series, so when is he going to come back and make his presence? I don't know that that that's a good question. That that back must be really bad if he ain't come back yet. I I, I know for the I mean Dallas series, Dallas didn't, really didn't have that inside presence. Now, granted, you probably would want him out there against you know 
for that weak side defense, if Luka's posting up like a Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, or Batum. But I I don't know. That, I mean, that's a great question. And I think you probably need some of that, need his depth, especially that second unit going against, you know, like a Derek Favors and whatnot. You know, in, in Utah. Maybe, you know, making, uh, what's that dude's name? Gordy James, like, a little bit di- difficult. Not let him have free reign free after at the three-point line. But I really can't say D-Log. I can't say, you know, when he can be back. They're going to need him. I mean, at this point, you know, you never know what, at this point, Gobert may turn into a, a score, this drive. I mean, this series. So you're gonna need somebody to really make a big, big difference. And Serge Ibaka is gonna be that piece. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna key in on Paul George. They're gonna key in on Paul on Kawhi Leonard. So you need to make sure that you have all that too. And then when the time comes, because at the same time, if you don't have, um, if you don't have them keyed in, it's gonna be the it's gonna be very, very difficult. But, I mean, this is going to be a series to watch for. Yeah, definitely will. And we'll keep our eyes on that, ladies and gentlemen. And then quickly transition to the other game this afternoon. About like, you know, noon here in the Central Time, 1 Eastern. The Sixers and the Hawks. With the Hawks winning by four points. Now, it didn't look like that from the beginning because the Hawks would tend to put it on the Sixers. But the main thing, the main storyline for tonight's, uh, early today's game was Joel Embiid, D-Lock. We know he su- su- suffered that meniscus tear against Washington, didn't play in game four, uh, didn't play the rest of game four, didn't play yeah. in game five. And I was kind of looking at early on to see if, how long he's going to be out there because... If he was moving around like Anthony Davis was last week, then you could put a bowl on 76ers chances of going to the finals. But credit to him. I was expecting the same thing, bro, to be honest. I, I, I was looking for it. And credit to him. You know, he played 38 minutes and had 39 points, 9 rebounds, you know, and 12 for 21 for shooting. And when he had that dunk early in the first quarter, I mean, in the first quarter, I said, okay, there's confidence right there. And that shows signs that, I mean, I know it's bad, but ain't, I mean, ain't too bad. In a sense, if that makes, if that makes sense. But what were your thoughts on the, on, on, uh, the Hawks and Sixers game today? The biggest person that played the big part was Joel Embiid. I was not expecting him to play like that. Uh, I I was I, I I didn't think he was gonna have a double double. I was expecting him to, you know, get less minutes early. But for him to play how he did, that tells me that. For one, he's ready to go. He's ready to to put down some good minutes for this team. But not only that, the thing about it is they play like that with him playing like that. The Hawks are going to be a problem. So this series is going to go longer than what everybody else thinks, if you ask me. Um, I think it's going to be a lot, a lot better than what everybody expects. Because the thing is, if if, if, if MB can if MB can put in that same time that he did, he's gonna give problems with Capella. Capella was having problems all game long. I don't know if he really watched it too much. I don't know if a lot of people seen it too much, but he was giving Capella problems all game long. At some point, 
Capella is going to have Capella's going to get in foul trouble. And when he do, it's going to cause bigger problems for everybody else around that series. So, but the, the biggest thing that I would say is Trey Young. Trey Young was doing everything he can. And he was making everything from three point land. Yep. Like it was nothing that he was missing. Trey Trey Young looked like this star that many, many people expected when he got traded from the Mavericks. So now for me. I expect this series to go to about. It's gonna to be tough, man. I think this series might go to six or seven, but I don't think it's gonna be easy for either team. It's gonna it's gonna be something that both teams, um, it like, because you gotta think about it too. Joel Embiid wasn't fully healthy. And later on in the season, he's going to be a lot. He's going to be healthier than he is now. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, but I do like the fact that the Hawks did steal a game early in Philly. Yeah. Uh, that series can go six or seven. But it just kind of depends on Embiid's health. And... The way the the playoffs has gone with injuries and stuff like that, I don't want to. Let's knock on wood, but you know, I kind of wait. I'm, I hate to say this, but I kind of wait for the other shoe to drop. You know, how long can you hold up? You know, how long can you keep this going? I, I I wish I I I I think he can hold up. You mentioned about him giving Capella the business. You know, early on, you know, Capella was like sagging off and stuff like that. And then you know, B, you know, busting a three pointer, a three pointer in his face and stuff like that. And then, like you mentioned, giving the giving the business down low, mid or mid in mid range. And I think if you can take Capella out the game, if you're Philly, and make them go to the bench, because, you know, DeAndre Hunter didn't play today. Behind that Capella, I mean, you got John Collins there, but he's a little bit smaller than than Capella. And then, you know, you got Gallinari as well, but, I mean, he ain't known for his defensive prowess. And also think for the... For this deal for the Atlanta Hawks. Another thing they gotta be worried about. You had a monster double digit lead at halftime. And you let this Philly team come back on you like this. Granted, yes, you won the game, but that's something I won't like hang my hat on. So that's something like Nate McMillan and crew got figured out. It's like if we got this team beat down like this, we got to put the foot, uh, keep the gas on the pedal, or find different ways to contain Embiid, make him work more. You know, trying to get him moving more, get that mobility going, stuff like that. Don't let him be, you know, too stationary, and you know, just pick us apart. Figure something out. Because, like I said, you should win by double digits against this. If you're up big like that, you can't not let that up. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is a game that they should have won. And there's no question. Especially when they were blowing them out. This is a game that they should have put away early. So now... You know, what do you do moving forward, especially when the B starts to get healthy? But the fact is, at the end of the day, 
the Hawks stole the game in, in Philly. And that played a huge part of what they're trying to do moving forward. So, we'll see how the rest of this series plays out. I think if we're looking forward to looking ahead of game two on Tuesday, you know, I won't be surprised if Philly came out and won that game because of the confidence of them playing back and having some momentum there. And the and the courage and sign that and be on a bad knee, put almost forty uh damn near put forty points on you. It's not a good sign. And if you're Nate McMillan the Hawks, you cannot allow that happen again. But D Lock, speaking of not letting it happen again. Since we, you know, last recorded and stuff like that, two prominent franchises are no longer in the playoffs. That being the Celtics and the Lakers. Celtics getting put out by the Nets and and four one, a gentleman sweep, if you want to call that. The Lakers got put out four two. Against the Suns in a game six that the Lakers came back too little too late in a sense. When KCP decided, you know, to to be a strong asset compared to other times. D Lock, we'll start with the Celtics first. Danny Age. And we talked about this last week, this last week as well. Danny Age, no longer in the front office, decides to step down, fire, whatever you want to call it. Brad Stevens, no longer the head coach, has now moved up into the front office role, which I did not see coming. I don't know if you saw that coming as well. Where do you see the future of this team going? Who do you see potentially coaching this team? In your eyes. I mean, if you ask me, one person that they should consider is Terry Stotts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, if, if 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 Orlando Magic are considering him, Terry Stotts need to be a person that they need to consider. I mean, he needs to be somebody that needs to be involved. But Boston, I've told you, and now we talked about this a long time ago. Boston is like literally up in the air. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know who the big man is, who the, who the big guy is over there. We talk about this in Tatum, but sometimes Kimball Walker takes over. Sometimes Jalen Brown takes over. We never know. So now at this point, you know, who's the guy? So you have to realize that Boston is just up in the air what they're going to do. They don't know. So we it's just, for me, Boston needs to start some cracks. Jason Tatum is the guy we know. A couple guys, the guy Kimba Walker needs to go. If it was me, I would trade him. There's no back-to-back off days like your Kawhi Leonard. That's not happening. Kawhi Leonard has the resume to do that. At this point, Boston need to figure out what they got going on. And I think it starts with trading or getting rid of uh, Kimba. Ah, the Boston Celtics. Where, where do you go from here? Where, where, where do you go? I, I think you're in a position now that I'm not saying you're stuck with Tatum and Brown, Smart and others, but you know, you, I get you. You you're going to ride with them with them in the long haul. You know, I think we talked in the past, and multiple other people talked about in the past that Danny Ainge didn't 
trade the young guys to get an established asset to maybe take the team over the hump. Now, maybe he tried his, his damnest to do that. We know about the Anthony Davis deal that his, you know, his days, you know, it, 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 it was going to be a no from the jump. Fine, whatever. But you let your team in your own division, the Toronto Raptors kind of swoop in and, you know, pick up Kawhi, lead them to a championship. You didn't make other moves, maybe like for Jimmy Butler, in a sense. And when she was kind of up for sale for a past couple of years. Who else? I'm looking around. Um, now, granted, you sold hot on Isaiah Thomas to get Kyrie. I'll give Ainge that. Now, the goal was probably to keep Kyrie, but that didn't really materialize like he had probably hoped. What do you think about this? The big free agent signs that Ainge has was able to get was Kimba Walker and Al Horford. And Al Horford, who fit that team like a glove and probably shot himself in the foot. And if I'm if Brad Stevens in that front office role now, to make this team kind of whole again, unless you really love Robert Williams that much to be the starting center for next year, talk to Al and see what's up. You know, then figure out what you're going to, I mean, the first part of is to figure out what to do with either Jalen Brown or Kimba Walker. Probably Kimba Walker first, like you mentioned. Kind of, you know, dangle some meat at New York. See if, you know, because I think they, they'd be looking for a strong for a point guard after, you know, the postseason they had. And with Terry and Rodriguez making a cha- uh, mention in the chat, you know, he'd throw out the name Becky Hammond. I, I, I don't know. What would you think about D, that about D Lock? Do you see Becky Hammond getting that job on any NBA head coaching job this offseason? I mean, I see him getting the opportunity somewhere. Um, but, you know, certain teams, you don't really want to put him there, like Boston, like, hell, a couple other squads. But um, he can maybe start in Orlando or something like that. <laughs> But Boston is a is a totally different rim if he was to if he was to try that. But I do see him getting an opportunity. Yeah. Uh, to say Beck I don't know. Will Brad Stevens make I mean Brad Stevens make that move? I don't know. I I don't know. Maybe. But we'll we'll see. And maybe they got some other folks in mind who's still coaching the playoffs. We'll see how that goes. But like I mentioned, D-Lock, if you can find a taker for Kemba Walker, like in New York, that's like looking for a point guard, do it. Or, you know, find another sucker out there, do it. I, I mean, I don't, I mean, that's one thing you got to do because he really hasn't produced like you kind of hope he would. And it sucks to say that as a, you know, as a guy that likes Kimba, you know, Mr. Don't Trade On Me Kimba, but, you know. And then figure out what you're going to do with Jalen Brown. you going to offer the max? Do you let him walk to maybe get in, like another piece? A lot of questions for this team. You know, I, I mean, how is Brad Stevens going to do in the front office role? 
That's my main, that's the big question right there. You talking about a guy that came from college from Butler to be a head coach at, at Boston. Now, you know, fresh from coaching, he's going to the front office role. You know, it's going to be a real interesting thing to to watch. In my eyes. What do you think about that? Not a bad move. I mean, the thing about it is, you know, where? Uh, you know, the thing that has me up and down right now is the, the franchise that's trying to be rebuilt. And one of the franchises trying to be re- rebuilt is the Orlando Magic. <laughs> yep. I told you, bro. I told you before this, before we even started the shows. I was like, bro, how many times are we trying to rebuild, bro? We've been we've been rebuilding since nineteen ninety six, bro. Like, why are we still rebuilding, bro? It's over. It's a, it's been over twenty years. Why are we still rebuilding? So you got to realize, like, you know, this determines what teams are going to be consistently, you know, great. And what teams are going to consistently every couple of years change their mind on who they want to be their coach? I think that, you know, he could take a chance and try Orlando. But if I'm a coach, I'm not going to Orlando. Every coach that goes to Orlando, they're done after three, two or three years. I mean, they can. I mean, it, Orlando's a intriguing job. And, you know, you, you have a top three pick, hopefully. You know, I think you got some cap saves to do something. I think, I, I think we discussed in the past, I hate how they gave big concessions to Fultz and Isaac like that before they really proved themselves. You know, and then maybe you figure out something with Obama and, and uh, Wendell Carter. Pick one and just move on. But, you know, another team I should be on a full rebuild mode. The Washington Wizards. I'm talking full rebuild, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, ship, rest book, ship, bill. Whoever else got another big Sally, ship them to full rebuild. Get rid of um, Scott Brooks. And this is a full rebuild. Do you like, we kind of talked about this off, off chance. I mean, off the, off, off, off the show. You traded Russ for John Wall, and you still got the same res- results. And you barely backdooring to the playoffs. You, like you mentioned, you said to me, have they really improved with that switch? I mean, they really have it. And you called it too. Like, when we, when we talked, like, hey, they really haven't really did much, really. They made the playoffs, but, I mean, what else have they done now? If I'm an Orlando Magic fan and we trade for them. Russ and we get in the playoffs. I'm happy, but regardless of that, Washington has done the same thing with Russ and Bradley Beal. Like we can consider Bradley Beal as being the top ten player. He's playing that great. So why, like, like you said, rebuilding is not a bad idea for them. They haven't done anything. They haven't done anything. You know, I commend Bill like staying there trying to do something, but. You know he's he's in like his late twenties now, and he's gotta look around and say, "Hey, I, I done all I could possibly do here. I think it's time for me to go." Now, where that will be, I we don't know yet. You know, we'll we'll see how things shake out in the off season. But if you're Bill. I said, hey, I've done all I could do in D.C. It's time to bounce. 
And if you're the GM for the uh, Wizards and ownership, you, you kind of need to do this. You, oh, I say kind of. You need to do this. What's the point hanging right from mid yeah. to the mid, like from seven to ten, and have a like a bloated bloated salary and barely make the playoffs? Then you know just balling balling him out and have you know ample cap space to do other things. Tank for a little while. Thing is, some of these franchises, they're okay with just making the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Like, Washington, the fact that you have Bradley Bill and Russ, you would expect more. You know, they have more than that. They have Daniel Gafford. They have Ru Hachimara. They have a couple pieces. So you would think more. they would do more, but now they're not doing too much. And it's kind of making everything in question for me. And, you know, for some of the draft picks they have. And, you know, is Hujamar you know, a guy that, you know, can be your third guy? That, that's something we would consider down the line. Can you, can you say a high on him and get, like, a first-round pick? You know, some other guys around there, too. So, I think, you know, we're talking about another team doing rebuild like the Magic, the Wizards, they got to be in play for that. You know, we've seen that in Cleveland. We've seen that in Detroit. The Bulls, I'll say if, about Chicago, I'll give that roster, you know, w- w- with Levine and Vucevic one more run before I tear that down again. And let's go from there in my humble eyes. But before we go, ladies and gentlemen, we do want to talk about one more thing. The Los Angeles Lakers. D-Lock, that damn first quarter of game six. Devin Booker, God bless his soul, got hot and stayed hot. The Suns, was driving the lane, got what they wanted. Jay Crowder was mean munging folks and hitting threes like nobody's business. Despite the loss, you had Anthony Davis trying to give it a go. He tightened up after five minutes. He was done. And you saw you saw in the movement and stuff like that during the game. He wasn't right. And Charles Barkley made a good point on the uh Inside NBA uh, post show by Anthony Davis, Steve Lock. I don't know if you saw this or not, but he made a good point by Anthony Davis. And since he's been in the league, he oh, it's something that's always been going on with him. Something. I don't know if if like the growth spurt from he had like in childhood, from his sophomore year to. You know, junior year, we grew like six feet. I mean, not six feet, but like six more inches to his body when he's already like six five. I don't know if that contributed things on how his body functions. But it's like, like something's going on with this guy every time. And if you don't get that corrected, LeBron's getting up there in age. The role players are left to be desired. What should the Lakers do in the off season to kind of get better, or 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 they or they find as they are right now, and need to, this need to get healthy for the long for next season? What do you think about that? What they what they need to do is for one, they need to redo that roster just a little bit, but. Anthony Davis don't need to go nowhere. He needs to be fully healthy come next year. Now, isn't it ironic the fact that Miami Heat and the Lakers got put out in the first round like that? But maybe they're feeling everything that happened, what happened last year. So for me, I would want them to make sure 
that they got all the rehab that they need. Once they get the rehab that they need, grab a couple pieces. But the fact that AD was hurt early, that tells you um, the impact that it made. The fact that they didn't even play. They just were playing in the NBA Finals last October. So they're on the short leash. But uh, this offseason, they need to make sure everybody is healthy. Um, if they can do that, they have a great chance of being back uh, contenders next year. You mentioned the roster. I think one thing was kind of like a blessing in disguise, in a sense. And maybe they bring this guy back. Maybe. But I think they probably looked to upgrade from Dennis Schroeder. I don't know what to I think maybe it was a blessing in disguise. He turned down the extension. You know, after the, this run, you know, since he declined that extension, he ain't been playing his best ball. And especially AD and LeBron being out. You know, could he command that money on the open market? I don't know. But. You know, we talked about it in this past, you know, along with Terry Rodriguez in the chat. You know, he mentioned about, you know, them, I'm going to trade for Kyle Lowry. And I want to give up Horton Tucker. Do that guy go after Lowry this offseason since he's a free agency, free agent? Maybe, maybe not. What about Derrick Rose? Maybe, maybe not. And, and, and for D Lock, for the love of God, they need to find a way to get rid of Kyle Kuzma and KCP. I don't know who you can get with them. Just get them gone. I, t- I tired of looking at Kyle Kuzma. I tired of waiting for him to take over, be that third scorer. And stuff like that. I tired of it. I kind of wish a couple years ago. We were kind of mixed for Kawhi Leonard. I wish we could have just traded him then for Kawhi. Hey, hey, fuck it. Here you go, San Antonio. Here, take him. But, like you mentioned. Somebody on that. They. they it felt like, feel like the pieces were there. But it just didn't materialize like we hoped. And for some of those guys, if they're just a couple years younger, cool. But, you know, some of those guys are getting up there in age. Gasol, up there in age. Matthews, he's about mid-30s as well. You know? So I don't know, D-Log. I don't know, you know, what this team could do. You know, I don't know what this team will do. I know one thing, though. They need a third superstar. And I kind of said this in the past. Getting AD was cool. But you can't really depend on, on him like that. LeBron, I can't say how long he will play at a high level. That's where you, you need that third guy in fold to kind of take up the slack. Now, let me ask you this. With Dame, you know, going out in the first round again, doing everything for the Blazers, can you see the Lakers trying to make a, a move for Lillard to be that third guy? Yeah, I do see them going at the Dame. Now, what happens is they're going to go out to Dame because Dame is that guy that's going to make the Lakers that better team. Now, my thing is, who do you let go of to get Dame? Oh, I, oh, every, every damn body except for LeBron AD. <laughs> you let everybody go except you let everybody go except AD, and you let everybody go except uh, LeBron. So at this point, you got to realize like Dame is going to make that big of a move, so he could make that big of a move, but. Uh, it would be a big 
big difference if you do grab him. But I do think they're going to push him. Or maybe Kyle Lawrence. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, for real, like everybody except for AD and LeBron. If you can find take it for KCP Kuzma and get those book salary off the books, do it. You know, I don't know how much you know. Drum is going to cost to bring him back. If he comes back on the cheap, good. On a good salary, good. If he walks and gets taken money elsewhere, fine. Let him go. You know, Taryn brings up in the chat real quick before we head out for the show. You know, the Lakers. You know, letting Rondo was a mis- was a, was a mistake, and then maybe letting Danny Green, Dwight Howard, go too. What you think about that, D. Lock? Should have kept the should they kept the same role players from last year, or you know, or did you think you know the new faces they added would probably would done greater things with this team this year? They should. Um, my thing is, if they do, if they add one or two shooters, and the Lakers would be fine. That's the biggest thing with them is. If they do add maybe one or two shooters, then they're going to be the better team, you know, in the West, maybe in the NBA. But they need to add some shooters to keep that same group. Yeah. I mean, well, they added, like, you know, Ben McElmore in midseason. You know, they didn't let – I mean, the times he played, he played pretty well. So, I mean, like, okay, I mean, why not let this guy play a little bit more? And whatnot. Mm-hmm. And if you get if he can give you the production less than you know what KCP did, and then ship KCP out. And then you know the mention of Danny Green before we head out. Danny Green was making fifteen million dollars, and for the production production he gave doesn't warrant the salary he he was getting. So I I can see why they let him go. But I'll let you have the last word real quick. I mean, for me, I think that the thing about it is the Lakers, this is a good year for them injury-wise for me to realize what they have next year. Um, They'll be fine, but... Now we got to make sure that they can do the same thing next year. I think Bron is in his third year, right, next year? Yep. So we're going to see what happens next year. Um, it's going to be kind of tricky. And they ain't want Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd doesn't want to be there, so we're going to see how this plays out. Maybe he does end up in L.A. in Mikhail R. So, yeah, we'll put a bow on that. I'm pretty sure we'll discuss more of this. And discuss, you know, what 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 can what these teams will do in the offseason. Like I said, we ain't touching the other teams around the league too. You know, Portland going out and you know, Miami's getting swept and all that stuff. So a lot of stuff to touch on. We'll discuss that through the coming weeks and stuff like that when more teams get eliminated and stuff like that through the playoffs and whatnot. But thank you for tuning tonight tuning in tuning in tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Here on Facebook on I Sports Radio, please do follow I Sports Radio on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You see the black and white logo, please give the brand a follow. As always, D Lock, how can people follow you on social media? They can find me on Black Dash 813. Uh, that's a Twitter and the Instagram. You definitely can find me there. I will be tweeting some. I will. I will be tweeting some crazy stuff there, especially with NBA going on. Let them know where they can find you at, man. Uh, you can find me on a Twitter at spawn forty two eighty eight. That is spawn forty two eighty eight. Also, do follow us on Twitter at fastbreak i e s r. That is fastbreak i e s r. Also, I do another show on the uh, on the side, the Crooks Process. Um, I just discuss 
and you can find me on, on Facebook and Instagram on that. I just discussed this couple days ago about potentially Julio coming to the Titans, and lo and behold, today he gets traded to the Titans. So check out my latest episode on there. Follow me, like I said, Facebook, Instagram, The Crooks Process. Do follow me there. And I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that deal right then and there. But till then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in with us. We'll talk y'all out next week. We out.